Good. I assume you want these hands on. That would be nice. I'd like to use the restroom if I may. I also would like a glass drink of water. I'm quite thirsty. If that's possible. Anything is possible. This is Jeff Ross. He's with the FBI. I know. He's with the Parks. too obvious about it, but uh, we've been looking for Elizabeth Smart for some nine months, and she's with you, and we're very curious as to how that all came about. But as far as we're concerned, it's a crime. I'm going to be up front with you right off the bat. We believe you've committed a crime, and you have certain rights we have to advise you of before we can talk to you. Okay. You have the right to remain silent. You understand that? Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. You have the right to have to talk to a lawyer and have him present with you while you're being questioned. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed to represent you before any questioning if you wish. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. You can decide at any time to exercise these rights and not answer any questions or make any statements. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. Okay, do you understand each of these rights I've just explained to you? Having your rights in mind, will you talk to us and answer our questions? Do you prefer to be called Emmanuel? Yes. Hey, Emmanuel, tell us about how you came to have Elizabeth Smart with you. You have in your possession the book of Emmanuel, Dr. Isaiah. We don't, actually. Yes, where yes, where is do. that? It's with, it's with my things. With your property? That's right. Okay. The book of what? Emmanuel, Dr. Isaiah. Okay. All right. Go ahead. That tells who I am and what I'm about. Did you write it? The Lord God Almighty wrote it. Through the Lord God. Through you? Yes, through me. And what's in that book that would cause you to have Elizabeth Smart with you? Read the book. Well, I will, but how would she? How did she come to be in your custody? And the power of Almighty God. And how did God lead her to you? He worked by the power of the Holy Ghost. He worked with him on her heart that she knew. And I was the Lord's true servant. So you converted her to your way of thinking? I didn't convert her to anything. The Holy Ghost converts. The Holy Spirit converts. The Holy Ghost converted her? The Spirit of God. She was converted by the Spirit of God. And why was she converted to be with you? When you read the book, you'll understand. Okay. Well, you have lived in what we would call the secular world, right? Yes. 
you did go by the name of Brian David Mitchell, did you not? To ask me what I was, who I am, is like that. To ask me if I'm someone other than who I am, mm -hmm. you see, to place me in a, in a position where I am not. Mm -hmm. In other words, I've forsaken the world and all of the world. Mm -hmm. And I'm a new creature in Christ, mm -hmm. in the Lord. And it's as immaterial to ask me or to answer such a question because it, it's, it's, it's absolutely immaterial. Okay, well it's not immaterial to us, so please bear with us. And I understand, it's, it's, I know it's not immaterial to you, because this is how you work in the world, but if you were to take as the Savior of the world, who he was, you wouldn't say, I'm the son of Joseph and Mary, born in Nazareth. You would not. Mm -hmm. There's no recorded incident where he was found saying that. He would say, my father has sent me. Mm -hmm. I came to do the will of the Father. But you're not Jesus no, Christ. I'm not Jesus Christ, but I am. You are a prophet. I am, I am his servant. You're his servant. I'm the Lord's servant. And he hath called me, and he's called me out of the world. And so I have no part in the world. So I have no part in those questions or answers that you're seeking about anything other than who I am now. Okay. This girl that was with you, what did you call her? Her name is Shir Shirjashin. How do you spell that? S H E R E A R. S H E R. S H E A R. Shir. Jaish. Uh, is J A J A S H U B. J A S H U B. Shirjashin. How old is she? She, her, once again, that, that question is very relevant. How old is she? She's 18. What would lead you to believe she's 18? Because the Lord has said she's, she is such. The Lord God Almighty told you that she's 18 years old? That's a yes or no question. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Did you marry Eight, her? But you say, you say 18. You say 18. Brian, just I'm listen. Not, I, I'm not, that's not who I am. Emmanuel, listen. Did you marry her? I didn't marry her, but she's still to me as my wife. Yeah. She's still to you as your wife? Have you had sexual intercourse with her? Those are very personal, private questions. And it's a very relevant and, question. Did you have sex with her, yes or no? You are at, you, you, you told me I could have a, an attorney present. I'm my, I am my attorney. You are and your own attorney? Presently I am. Okay. Okay, presently I am. I'm defending myself, am I not? These yes, questions you are. can be used against me, correct? That's correct, they can be. Okay. Well, let's just cover the basics, okay? Okay. Did you take Shirar Jeshu? Shir Jeshu, Esther Isaiah is her name. Shir Jeshu, Esther Isaiah. I'm sorry, Emmanuel, I just can't pronounce that. I'm just going to call her Elizabeth, okay? Shir Jeshu, Esther Isaiah. Esther? Esther, I'll call her Esther. Okay. Did you take Esther out of her house? The Lord God delivered her to us. And how did the Lord God deliver her to you? Was that on the street somewhere? Was it at the shelter? Did the Lord God sneak into her bedroom and take her out of her room in the middle of the night and deliver her to you? I mean, this is, this is, I understand, you know, you're trying to, this isn't making much sense to the two of us. Right. So well, what I was hoping is maybe you could explain it in a way that we can understand well, it. Well, you're, 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 you want answers that you can use against me. You know you do. Well, not only that, but understand you, this. You, and you say you want to know the truth. Sure, we do. Okay. But the truth will set us set you free. It will set all men free. I mean, and, the, and, and, and the, when Jesus Christ was questioned, mm -hmm. his answers didn't please them either. Yeah. They were very angry with him. Excuse me. You were once LDS. You consider Joseph Smith to be a true prophet of God? Joseph Smith is a true prophet of God. And he wrote the 13 Articles of Faith? Yes, he did. And what was the 13th Article of Faith? Sir, we believe in being subject to the laws of the land. Is that not what the thirteenth article of faith says? Yes, it is. 
then all we want to know is if you've been faithful to your own beliefs, have you been faithful to the laws of the land? What was Jesus Christ accused of? I'm not talking about Jesus. I have been I'm faithful. talking about you. I have been absolutely faithful to the righteous laws of this land. Amen, I have. Okay. Because all, all righteous laws flow from God, but not all laws are righteous, and not all laws come from God. And the Constitution of the United States was founded on righteous principles. But when you read the book of Emmanuel, Doggy Isaiah, you'll come to understand that this nation has become the most corrupt and evil nation on the face of the earth. Right. Why? Because they've been given great light, truth, and knowledge, and they've perverted the right ways of the Lord, and they're filled with great idolatry and wickedness. And those who have greater truth have greater evil. There's greater goodness with greater truth possible, but there's also greater evil, because when you have greater truth, you can put on all the appearances of righteousness and pervert the right ways of the Lord. And this is what this land, this country has done, because they've had great blessings, great light, truth, and knowledge, even coming down from God through you know, a divine constitution and and uh, and Christians coming here for religious freedom. And uh, well, let's get back to Elizabeth Smart. Yeah, because this is this is this sounds more like a political debate than not political. It's, there's nothing politi There's nothing unpolitical. Well, let me let me just let me just put this right on the table. Nothing, nothing, there's nothing unpolitical. So far, I have no Christ idea what you're talking about. you I. Maybe maybe it's because I grew up outside of Utah and I'm not familiar with all this you know religious stuff. But you need to bring it down to a level so that I can understand it. Because this stuff you're talking about, you know, and how it relates to uh, Elizabeth and how she ended up being taken many, from her many, home. Many and let me just say this: for the past past nine months, that family has gone through hell. I understand. You do understand that. I understand that very much. I mean, the, their whole family has been torn apart. I understand. And I can tell you that since since the day that she's been taken, both Cord, myself, and hundreds of other yeah. law enforcement officers have been spending countless hours upon hours trying to find this girl. And the family, I mean, they wake up during the middle of the night and their kid is gone, and they have no they have no idea where she went. They think she's dead. We expected to find a corpse. And so your explanation so far as her as as far as God delivering it, that God delivering her to you makes no sense to me because it doesn't match up with the facts. If she, if she, how, how did, how was when the children of Israel were led into the promised land? Let's, let's keep it out of the Bible. No, let's keep no, it to present time. Like, there's no other way I can explain it. I'm sorry. All right. Well, if you don't, don't mind me if when you start to explain it, it makes no sense okay, to me if I just cut okay, into it. Okay. Well, let me say, you just shared with me how her family suffered, mm -hmm. right? But. When God's children become idolatrous and wicked, they suffered many things. The whole history of mankind, the scriptures, is great suffering. Mm -hmm. They become idolatrous and wicked. They've been taken into captivity. They've been torn apart. They've been slain. Many things have happened to the Lord's children when they've been disobedient. Time to now, bring it in for a landing. Okay, okay, here, 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 okay, stuff again. here, here it right. comes in for a landing. When the children of Israel went into the promised land, they uh -huh. destroyed many, many peoples. And in many cases, they took daughters captive and just destroyed all the men, women, and children except the daughters who were virgins. All the, all the boys were destroyed, all the men and women were destroyed, and the only thing they took captive were the virgin daughters. That was the children of Israel when they went into the promised land. In some cities, they, the Lord commanded them to destroy the whole earth completely. So where was and, your promised land located? Well, the whole earth is the promised land for all of us. When the Lord, but for you? When the Lord, when the Lord comes in great power and mm -hmm. mighty glory and might, He's going to, to destroy all the wicked and lift up the poor, the sick, and the afflicted, the humble followers of Christ. Lift them up, and they will inherit the earth. This is according to the gospel and the scriptures and the teachings of the Lord. Right. Are you saying that because you are a prophet of God? I never said I was a prophet of God. I believe you did. No, I didn't. I said I'm a servant of the Lord. Because if the Lord, you were, God, if the Lord Isaiah, thou sayest, you talk, if the Lord... It's Isaiah, you're talking all over me here, sir. Please, Emmanuel. relax. Emmanuel. Emmanuel, relax. Are you saying because you're a servant of the Lord that... God provided you with a virgin to be your bride? Is that what you're saying? That's a yes or no question, man. I didn't say that. You can draw your own conclusions. You said you were talking about this, how our family suffered, and you couldn't understand. You couldn't understand why Emmanuel. their family would have to suffer. Emmanuel. I'm saying that the Lord's children, the, 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 the Emmanuel. much suffering. So can Emmanuel. we draw that conclusion that yes. because you're a servant of the Lord, God owed you a virgin for a while? Absolutely not. You're making your own conclusion. I'm asking you if that's he asked, he asked why did her family have to suffer? 
And I'm telling okay, you. We're beyond that. Let me get on to another tactic. Okay. We've been talking to this girl, and she said some really terrible things about you. And I just want to ask you some very direct questions that don't deserve an answer from theology. Okay. Did you take this girl out of her house at Ninth Point? Yes or no? I'm not going to answer that question. And why not? I just want to know why you don't want to answer. Is you yes or no question? Chance, you know. Let me explain something to you, okay? <clears throat> okay. Uh, you're not that far off, okay? Uh, we've been studying you now for a couple of weeks. You've been arrested for DUI and for some substance abuse way back in the 70s. You were arrested for burglary in San Diego last month and you gave a bad name. You were stopped by the Sandy police this afternoon and you and Wanda and Elizabeth all gave bad names, obviously in an attempt to evade the police. You were much more streetwise. You were much more streetwise than you were letting on to us now, okay? You have been around more. I'm not letting on to anything else but what I am. I think what you're doing here is you're thinking that you're going to lay some kind of insanity defense. I'm not. I'm not. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So you are saying? I'm saying. I'm saying to you that I am who I say I am. Emmanuel David Isaiah, the servant of the Lord. Brian David Mitchell. I am the servant of the Lord, and my name is Emmanuel David Isaiah. Well, guess what? We're servants of the Lord, too, only in a different track. Here's the deal. Do you know what you're under arrest here for? You are under arrest for aggravated kidnapping because the girl told us that you took her against her will out of her house at Ninth Point. You are under arrest for aggravated sexual assault on a minor. Both of these charges carry life imprisonment. You can be David Isaiah Emanuel in prison for the rest of your life, and it's very likely. This is your opportunity now to tell us what happened and why you did what you did. And instead, you keep sending us off on tangents that have nothing to do with the matters and the questions at hand. You are very likely to spend the rest of your life in prison. Now, that might not be important to you as a servant of the Lord, and you may think it's nothing, but let me tell you, you will never see Wanda again. You will never see Elizabeth again. You will never get out of prison. You're talking about. You're talking about. I'm talking about talking, your future, Isaiah. No, I'm talking about your future you, here and now. Do you please understand that God had power to deliver me? Do you understand that you don't have an insanity defense because you've obviously lied to conceal your identity from the police? It, it matters not what you're saying and what you, how good you think this case is against me. It matters not. God had power to deliver me out of the hands of all of my enemies. Well, who are your enemies? The Lord said to Peter, get me behind me, Satan. He's that talking moment, Bible stuff again. I never even read it. He, I pretended like I did when I was in grade school, but I wasn't. I was reading comic books. You said you were serving the Lord, too. You were yeah. You were serving the Lord, too. That's right. I can only answer you according to the words of the Lord. All right. Well, I'm not he said to Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. Now, what was Satan at that? Was Peter at that moment his enemy? Yes. Because we're all subject to deception. We're all subject to, to, to follow the wrong spirit and to follow our own... Bring it from Landon, man. You're talking in circles. You're talking this biblical stuff. It makes no sense to anyone sitting in this Emmanuel. room in the 21st century. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. It doesn't. I know it doesn't. Sir. And that's why great destructions are prophesied upon the whole thing. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. What is I'm, your name? I'm, my name is Corden. Corden. Yeah. I'm a Christian. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a Lutheran. Okay. I've read the Bible. Right. I've studied the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, I'm familiar with prophets of God. Mm -hmm. I'm familiar with the great prophets. Elisha, Elijah. Mm -hmm. I'm unaware of any prophet that lied to conceal their identity. Abraham. He, well, I'm not going to get into that. I'm unaware of any prophet that took a girl out of her own house at Knife Point and what forced did, her what to did, marry him what did, and then had sex with her. It was, it was, Joshua, her was, Joshua, was Joshua a prophet? Yes, he was. Okay, then why did the children of Israel and the command of God go into the Promised Land and destroy many cities, and in some cases take the daughters? If I recall my Old Testament, the Lord actually commanded them to destroy everybody. There were instances, only the livestock. The, Is that not true? No. In some instances, the daughters were preserved, those who were virgins. In what cities? I'm unaware of that. The no. Lord commanded them to go into Canaan and wipe everybody out. Of yes, but the there were instances where they took the daughters and sometimes the animals. And I'm asking what instance? 
You know what? You say where you know your Old Testament. You Why do you know your Old Testament? So where is where? it? It's in there. You find it. It's in there. So you don't know. It's in there. So maybe you haven't studied the Bible as much as you said you have, hey? So maybe this is all just bullshit, huh? Maybe this is all just about you David. know. Maybe this is all just about David Mitchell trying to get a young virgin for himself. You know. You know what? None of the those who Christ called to be apostles were were learned men. They were fishermen. They None were of them were kidnappers men. either. None of them raped little children. None of them were ordered to take a girl against her will out of the house. None of them threatened to kill a little nine-year-old girl if she made any noise or uh. <clears throat> or whatever. You know. You know, I don't hate you, and he doesn't hate you either. But we're going to go to the judge and ask for considerations on your bail, because you got to realize that your life, as you have known it, is I over. Don't, I don't expect you to be delivered. I don't expect you. that you're going to get out of custody until the day you die. Okay, your future depends upon you this remember, interview right you, here, right now. You remember, you're not taking you, you remember? Do you remember? That Peter was in prison, and an angel came, and the guards and opened the prison door and let him out. Isaiah, no angel's going to let you out of this room, hon. There's nobody coming for you. You know what? God will deliver me. Was Elizabeth the first kid you ever had sex with? The, the Lord God will deliver me. Was Elizabeth the first child you ever had sex with? You see, you see, Isaiah, we've been doing some studying and talking to your ex-wife Debbie. She says that you had some sort of sexual relationships. She's lying, absolutely lying. Are you sure she's lying? She's absolutely lying. What motivate what would motivate her to lie about you? What would what would do that? Because she's very dis she was very disturbed. But there was absolutely nothing like that that ever took place. Are you sure? Absolutely sure. Well, We've been talking to her too. And she says that you're just not really quite your standard person. She says there's things that are wrong with you. Okay. Yeah. And and Christ was considered that there was much wrong with him. You're not Christ. No, but I'm his servant. And all of his apostles and his prophets. From the beginning of time, Enoch was called a wild man. In the desert. Well what we're trying they're to get all there. they're all considered to be crazy nuts. All of them were yes. by the world. No, no, you're not. No, but you're, you are. Just, what he just said that... She was telling you what, he was telling that, you what exactly, Angela said. Exactly. So I responded to that by telling you that this is often what uh, I that, said. That's neither here nor there. We're trying to find out what happened with Elizabeth, where you were for nine months with her, how many times you had sex with her, if that was the only kid you ever had sex with besides Elizabeth, how it happened that she, you know, she gets taken out of her room during the middle of the night. Those are things we're interested in. That's it. We want to be able to go to Elizabeth's family and offer an explanation as to how, for the past nine months, she's been kept away from her friends, her family, her parents, her brothers and sisters, who have been absolutely terrified and horrified by this whole thing, and for probably some months have, have thought that she's not even alive. I mean, we want to be able to have an explanation for them. And, I mean... <clears throat> you have to feel for the family in this and kind of see where they're coming from and all this thing. I mean, they have gone through hell. I have been to their house on numerous occasions. Corden has talked to them on numerous occasions. And I, have, I have great compassion and love for them. Well? Because they are the parents of my... Of oh, horseshit. You took their daughter out of their house at knife point, and now you're not you're even saying, denying it. You're saying I did that? I'm saying you did God, it. You're saying I did that. I'm, I'm saying that you, you did it. I'm telling you that the Lord God Almighty delivered her to us. And I'm asking how, because I don't believe you. I think you're lying your ass off. Maybe if you have, never, if you have, I've any, never said, I've never lied about anything. All I told you. Then you tell me the truth. How did Elizabeth wind up with you? I'm tell me the truth I'm right now. By the power of God, she was delivered to us. And how did God deliver her to you? By the power of God. How did God get you into yes. the house? How did God get you into the house? By the power of God, she was delivered to us. He levitated you into the house. You know, you're not. This is this isn't working. Well, 
I'll start calling you Emmanuel when you start giving me answers to questions that I think are reasonable. Because right now, I this God delivering her from I, the house is I, ridiculous. I've, I've, I've tried to give you the honest truth. No, you yeah. haven't. Yes, I have. The absolute honest The honest truth. truth would be you telling me how you got her into your control and where you kept her for the past nine months and what you've done with her for the past nine months and not telling me stories about people going into the promised land and killing everybody except for the virgin daughters. I don't want to hear that shit. You know, I'll say that for Sunday when I go to church. You know what? You're ashamed. Down deep inside, you know what you did was wrong, and you're ashamed. And that's why you won't tell us. If you that's have any... why you... Prophets do not hide what their actions. They stand up for them, and they answer for them. If God told you to do this, then you better tell us. And they take responsibility for it, too. And this is you're bullshit. Too, you're saying that I can't use the scriptures, and yet both of you do. I'm telling no. us that you're lying to us. Let me ask you this. But you and you're ashamed of your actions, and you will not explain your actions to us. the scriptures. Hey, and Christ, crying. Christ did not... Did Christ run from the cops? Did he give false names when he was arrested he and approached by the police? He had to flee many times. Really? Really. When did he ever give a bad name to the police like when he did, did today? Yeah. When did he ever do that? Christ never did that. He I, did. Didn't he kind of hand himself over? Are you telling me that our Savior lied to the he police? Did not, he did not. He never, he never. He did not. In many instances, he did not give them what they were after. How many times did Christ get pulled over on a DUI? Or get break into someone else's house. No, it was no. There are prophets who are drunk and been drunk. How many times has Christ gone into a little girl's house and taken her out of her home during the middle of the night against her will? When have you ever known Christ to pick up a weapon? Okay, is Christ the God? Is He God? No, well, according okay. to my religion, okay. He is. All right, then all the things He commanded His people to do in the Bible, Christ did. Did He command anyone to abduct a little girl and have sex with her? I don't believe my New Testament says anything about that. I think this is all about about Emmanuel. I think it's all about it's all about you and what you want. You want your virgin. You want to have a young girl to have sex. I with, know what you're going to accuse me. Even if you have to go take. I know what you're going to accuse me with. You want to accuse me of being some diabolical no. evil criminal, and and I'm the servant of the Lord. No. I'm, and I've only done I've only done what I've been commanded to do. By whom? By the Lord Jesus so God Christ. commanded you to go into uh, the smart home and take her. I the only thing God that I'm saying to you that God commanded me to do was 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 to accept her as my wife. Okay, and so when He commanded you to accept her, what did you do? I accepted her. How did you accept I her? I received her. What did you? How did you receive her? In the bonds of marriage. In the bonds of marriage. Okay, well, how did you get to that point? You have to be able to, you know, get her somehow, right? You can't marry someone without them being present. She was delivered in, in unto us. By whom? By God. So by the Lord God. God I remember seeing the, the the you know description of the guy that went into the bedroom and I don't think it was anything close to you know pretty much close to you. Even the voice. I mean Mary Catherine she she recognized the voice. It just took her a while to figure out who it was. Because you'd heard it before, because you'd done work at the smart home. So, it wasn't God that went in there. It was God that went in there. Through you? God works through many ways and means. Well, you're not in your head. God I, through I, you. I did not acknowledge that. I said, God. You're not in your head. I was not. You're not in your head. I said, God you're works not, through. Brian, you're not in your head. God works through with many ways and means. So, Brian, did, excuse me, Emmanuel, we talked to the girl, okay? She says it was you. She said that you appeared in her bedroom on June the 4th, held a knife to her throat, took her out of the house, well, took her to a campsite, she's saying, and raped her. If she's saying that, why are you asking me? Because, you want to know why? Because there's a 15-year-old girl who for the past 10 months, or 9 months, has been completely horrified, and the last thing you want to have to do is have to put her through all that pain again by constantly asking her questions and have her relive it. I used, I, I used to work with kids. I worked with kids who were, mm -hmm. that were horribly abused, sexually, physically. I you know. understand. But I don't think you do, okay? But, but because she, to ask them to relive she, that. She, Hang on a second. She, I'm, I'm talking. To relive what? She's had, she's had a glorious experience. A glorious experience? With you? Are you, that, are, are you? are you telling me that for the past nine months that she's been with you that it's been glorious? It's been... Our, we've been had many trials, and all of us have had many trials and tribulations. Can you explain something to me? 
We've all had many trial, difficult trials and tribulations, but we've seen God's power of deliverance to protect, provide, and deliver mightily. And for example, and, and and she knows she knows who I am. She knows I'm the servant of the Lord. And she, she does. And, yes, she did. She does. So, give me some examples of some of these trials you went through over the past nine months with Elizabeth and with Wanda. Do you call her Wanda, or does she have another name too? Esther, Jashim, Esther, Isaiah, and Hephzibah, Eladah, Isaiah. I can't even pronounce that one. One is easier for me. And let me tell you something else. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna refer to her than anything. Because I, I can't even say she's Is that you right? Said it. Is that good? You All right. But tell us about some of the trials over the past nine months that you've had her. Tell us about we some have, of the tribulations. We have great opposition in the world. Well, explain it. I still have, give me some specific examples. Tell me about a time about no, how you got no, into the house no and took her out without it's getting no, caught. It's no different. It's no different than than all of the Lord's followers well, and servants of God from the, time, the beginning of time. How did God tell you to get into the house? Great opposition. Great opposition. Well, let's just start with some. Room. Let's just start with some basics. How do you support yourselves? That's not a true it's, question. It's just conversation. It, it's not. We're, we don't support ourselves. The Lord God Almighty supports us. So, and sustains us. In other words, you panhandle. The Lord needs people to lay a dollar or two in your palm now and then. Is that right? The Lord provides for us. He sustains us. How about recycling Fine. aluminum cans in San Diego? The Lord, Lord mightily sustains us and provides for us. So, uh, I take it through that answer that you guys were recycling aluminum cans. And no, you. that's your accusation, and you're you're nothing against a lot of doing that's it. That's your accusation. It's not an accusation yes, because there's no crime behind recycling. But that's your accusation. Cans. No crime with really paying it. The Lord provides for us mightily. Mm -hmm. So where did He provide to you? He works it upon the hearts of His humble followers to give up their substance. <sighs> In every instance, he works it upon the hearts of his humble fathers to give it their substance. And that's how we're provided for. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, well, like I said, I think that you've been around. You've been arrested a couple of times. Well, I think you're trying to lay the ground. Joseph Smith was Excuse arrested me. almost 50 times. Yes, he was. Well, you're kind of laying the groundwork for the state mental hospital as opposed to prison. And you know, it would have worked except for one thing. You've been contacted by the police several times, and each time you've lied about who you were, who Elizabeth was. That gives uh, more than ample evidence that you have. Do you think I want to? Do you think I want to go to a mental hospital? Yeah. Do you think that's what I want? Because otherwise, you're going to go to prison and die there. I don't. I a mental hospital to me is is a worse thing to have happen. Do I think that you have any compassion for that family do, right now? Do, no. A mental hospital to me would be a worse thing to have happen to me in prison. Well, I don't know. In my mind, but the Lord, but I will, I'm willing to suffer whatever the Lord God will. If, if neither, neither one of those things will do without great suffering for me, for, for Hephzibah, for Sir Jashim. All of these things. Elizabeth. Sir Jashim, all of us are going to suffer greatly through, through this because we've been taken and we've been separated as a family. What does Sir Jashim mean? A remnant will return. A remnant? Where is that from? What kind of word is That's it? That's Isaiah. Isaiah? From Isaiah. It means a remnant will return. A return where? The remnant of the Lord's children will return unto him. A remnant means that, that many... That that's just an interesting name for a kid that's been kidnapped. That's all I'm thinking. Sir Jashim, the remnant will return. So that's an interesting name for a 15-year-old girl who was kidnapped from it her home at night. She's, I'm for a sign and a portent to the world, and so is she. Say what? She is for a sign and a portent to the world. Her, her, be, her being delivered out of the world was a sign to the world that the Lord is making bear his holy arm in the eyes of all nations. And it, and it, and it did stir the whole world. I'm, in ways that I never thought or dreamed that it would, because it's God's work and not mine. So that must be a pretty big power trip then to know it's that you not, had some no, part it's, in it. It's very humbling. It's very, it's very humbling because I'm nothing. I'm at, and, and it's it's a because testimony. You created all this. I didn't create anything. You this had is a, hand a in it. This is a testimony. It's God's hand, not mine. This is a testimony to me that God is all powerful and Almighty. I'm nothing. I'm nothing. I all I can do is obey His Spirit and be obedient unto the. To, to what he asked me to do, and then be and then and then be amazed. God tell you to have sex with her. 
Let's back. That's a really good question. Let's back that one up. Did God tell you to take this girl for your wife? He did. He did. He did. And where did he manifest that to you? By his Holy Spirit. When did he manifest that to you? Would that be the day that you worked on the smart house? The day is immaterial. No, it's not. It it's is immaterial. It is immaterial. What's important is that he did command me and he did deliver her out of the world and out of all Babylon. But we're very curious as to when he made this apparent to you through the Holy Spirit that you were to take Esther to be your wife. Surely receive that's nothing her, to be receive her as my wife. That's certainly nothing to be ashamed of. He delivered her out of the world and commanded that I receive her as my wife. And when did he make that command? Was it in the spring? You, the, the fall? That the time that, worked on the, that the date mattereth not. It matters to me. Well, I don't know the date. I can't give you a date. I think you're being really rude by not answering such a simple question. That's not even a trick question. It's not designed to entrap you in You know what? Every single one of your questions are true questions. Every single one of your questions are meant to attract me, and you know, and you're lying. Okay, here's a you're question. Lying. Here's a question okay. that's very direct. You, just, you feel very justified in your lies because you, you think you're doing a good thing. But yet, when you, and you accuse me of lying because I feel directed in what I'm doing, and because you feel directed in what you're doing, you feel justified in lying to me and deceiving me. I'm not lying Interesting. Or deceiving you. Yes, you are. What have I lied to you about? We've asked you pretty direct questions. Yes, I know you have. But then you come back and you say things like, well, never mind. I'm not gonna, I don't want to accuse and blame you either. I'm just saying, you know what I'm talking You know exactly what I'm You're a very about. interesting person to me because I've been talking to your mom, to your brother Tim, to your daughter, to your son Travis. I've been talking to a lot of people about you. And you know, and all the people that I've ever met in 25 years of police work, you were the only person that ever actually read the Bible and then sold all of his worldly possessions and gave the money to the poor. You're actually the only guy that I have ever met that has done that. You're the only one. You don't think I find that fascinating? I think now you've changed your tactics to use flattery because a while ago you said that I was, I was completely false and that, and that I'm, and tried to accuse me of being anything but a true servant of the Lord or doing anything but being obedient to the Lord, but rather just someone who was just out to satisfy whatever carnal lust. Carnal lust. You're accusing me of just wanting to satisfy carnal lust. Well, that's because and being and, being, and just being. Well, here this me is out. what you this is what you accuse me of. Now that tactic hasn't worked, so now you're going to use flattery and say, "Oh, you're the only well, person hear me that's out. done this." Hear me out. You got to understand. You do understand that you are under arrest. I do. And you are not free to leave. I do and that potentially these charges could keep you in custody for the rest of your natural life. It mattereth not. It doesn't matter. It mattereth not. Okay. Well, as, long as, I'm, as long as I'm being obedient to the Lord, whatsoever I suffer for Him, it mattereth not. Okay. You have chosen death, the life... Prison, prison or death, prison or death, it mattereth not. I know that you're very... The Apostle Paul spent much of his life in prison. You're very committed. Okay. You're obviously very committed. You obviously strongly believe that the Holy Spirit has moved you to do these things, like taking Elizabeth and uh, God delivered her to you to be your wife. We've also covered things. We've covered things about how Jesus Christ does not lie. The prophets of God do not lie, and they're proud to stand up for their actions and answer questions. You are here accused of aggravated kidnapping and aggravated sexual assault. Okay. And we are here, Isaiah, we are here yeah. to listen to you're your saying, story. You're saying that they don't lie. No, don't get off don't get off on that tangent right now. You hear me out. We are here to listen to your story Amen. and your explanation. And you keep sending us off to the ozone. We ask simple direct questions. The question is, did you enter Elizabeth direct, Smart's and house and simple paper? and make simple direct accusations. And we want a simple direct denial or admittance. That's it. You know, the jury is going to listen to these proceedings. We're being recorded right now. Mm -hmm. The jury's going to listen, and they're going to say to themselves, if he had nothing to hide, and if he really believed he was a prophet, why wouldn't he answer the most basic and simple of questions? Okay. Why didn't Jesus? We're not talking about Jesus. You are not Jesus. I'm We're not talking Jesus about Emmanuel. I'm his servant, and I pattern my life after him. 
Jesus didn't take any kids out of their homes. He is the God. Of, he is the God of the Old Testament. Uh, excuse me. Jesus yes. didn't take a wife. He is the God. That's what you say. That's what I say. That's, that's what, what the scriptures say. say. The Bible no. says. No. Are you telling you me know, Jesus if was you know, If you know Mormon theology, exaltation is is is, is having is, is is the highest degree of the celestial kingdom is having more than one wife, and no one, and this is what the prophet Joseph S Smith taught very clearly, and it's throughout the doctrines of the church, that no man can receive the highest degree of the celestial kingdom except he receive the law of, of celestial marriage, which is which is a plurality of wives. Therefore, Christ had to have more than one, had to have a wife and more than one wife. Well, it's not contemporary theology. It's it's very contemporary. It's it's throughout the church. I've never heard so that they before. It's throughout no, the it's throughout the Mormon Church that I believe that all marriages had to be consensual. Is that not true? And, and, and it was consensual. Did Christ take any it was consensual. wives by holding a knife to their throat during the middle of the night? A knife in the, in the throat in the middle of the night with threats against her family was consensual. And Christ is God of the Old Testament. And see, you won't, 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 don't want to let me talk about the scriptures, but then you come right back with them. You don't want to talk about the scriptures. You don't want to talk about the scriptures at all. You don't want to bring it up. You come right back at me. We ask you a question like, I can't How did you get in the smart house? I, I, God delivered him to me. I can't answer you any. I can't answer you any other way than what the Lord God Almighty puts into my heart to say. That's all I can do. So He's telling you I to can't. play games with us. He's telling me to to give you the truth. Well, the truth would be when we ask a question like, "Where have you been for the past nine months with Elizabeth Smart?" Well, I've been to this canyon, where I lived in this camp, or I went I to San tell, Diego. I can answer that. I can answer that truth. I can answer that very truthfully to say that the Lord, that she's been with us, and that the Lord God Almighty has been with us mightily. Where have you been with her? Throughout the land. Can you give us, like, be more specific? We, the Lord takes us from place to place. Where has the Lord taken you so far in the past nine months with her? And I, I mean, when I say where, I don't need a general answer. I mean, I'm looking for something you know, like maybe the name of a city, or a state, or, you know, location, or you know, what canyon? I can, what, only what answer, I can only answer according to what the Lord God Almighty puts into my heart to say, and that's, and that's being truthful. That's being truthful, that he's taken us with... That yeah, poor he's, girl. He's taken us with a mighty hand throughout the was it, was it the Lord God Almighty that had to tether Elizabeth in the camp to keep her from running away? Was that the Lord's idea, or was that your idea? Or is that something that Christ does when he wants to take a wife? You have to tie your wife to... Uh, a tether to keep her there? Is that your idea or is that the Holy Spirit's? The whole world is in bonds and chains. The bonds and chains of iniquity, great wickedness, oh, and idolatry. That's, that's the a whole world, you had to the think whole about world, that yeah. for a minute, the whole, world, the whole world is in the bonds and chains of yeah, idolatry to, uh, and great wickedness. You had to process that question. A it's only, it's you only, answered. you know what it is? It's, it's taking you time. Trying not it's to taking take responsibility time. For it. It's taking time to listen to God. It's you and trying let him to speak. It's you're trying, trying to, to evade the question. Is what it is. It's the Lord God is giving the so Lord. So the Lord tell you? Did the Lord tell you to tire giving, the campsite? It's giving the Lord God Almighty time to speak to us, to take to pause and, and let Him speak. Did the, is, did the Lord tell you to tire up on the campsite? The whole world, the whole world no, is in the bonds and chains uh, of idolatry and great wickedness. This is the reality. Okay. And because of that, great destruction. The reality of it is, is that for the great past five months, the reality destructions, of it is, great destructions are coming upon the earth. This great is worse than Christmas mass. Great destructions are coming upon the earth. Great destructions upon, are coming upon you. Yeah. You know, this is uh, obviously word salad defense mechanism that you throw up whenever the questions get really, really tough. Okay, you just start wandering on about the scriptures and stuff. But it's obvious to me. You talk about tactics and interrogation. When the questions get too tough and uncomfortable, you just start wandering off. Okay. I've never wandered. I've stuck right Did you, straight. Straight you the take gate, Elizabeth Smart out straight, of her house at straight, night point? Yes or no? Straight is the gate, and there was the way, and I have stayed on that straight and narrow path. And you talk about wandering, you guys are wandering all over the place. Trying right. everything and anything to, 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 to get me to say something false. To say something false. And I will only speak the truth. All right. Only speak the truth. Do you, you take a look at smart out of her house at knife point? Your, yes or no? your accusations are false. Then you did not, and you are denying. Now, in the, teaching, in the teachings of Unibly, who's a great scholar in the church, 
he says that Satan will always accuse with the truth. You know what and I think? I think you're getting awfully always... uncomfortable now because you keep talking over the top of this. This is getting a little too intense yeah. for you, isn't it, Emmanuel? We're getting to the real hard it? questions, and you keep retreating into your what spill it? and your diatribe. What did did you do? take Elizabeth out of the house at knife point? What yes or no? What did Christ do? He didn't take Elizabeth out of the house at knife point. He didn't marry women by holding knives to their throats. He didn't have sex with 15-year-old girls. He didn't tether girls to a campsite to keep them from running away. He didn't lie to police when they asked him who he was. Yes, it's closing he in. He didn't break into people's houses, and he wasn't a drunk driver. I'm afraid that you know little of, of who Christ is and what he did, because well, he is God. And he's we're done not many talking about Christ. This, we're, we're talking, talking about, about you. Talking about Ryan David Christ Mitchell, his, a.k.a. Emmanuel David true, Isaiah. His true servants have done and do many things and still do many things that the world... Will will kill them for. Um, I hate. I think we just have to get to the core of the problem yeah. here, and the core of the problem is is Isaiah. Imprison them. And no, listen to me. Okay, we're getting to the real core of the problem. Is is you, and the real core is you are not a prophet, and you are not a servant of Jesus Christ. You are indeed Brian David Mitchell, and you have done a really terrible, terrible thing that you need to get to. You have done something awful. I'll tell you, the both of you, you talk about shame, the great shame that will be upon you both hey. for treat for, for for talking the way this way to the Lord's <coughs> servant. You know, hey, you're not accusing, the Lord's servant. accusing, you know accusing me in this way. You are not the Lord's the servant. Shame, you're not the Lord's servant. I tell you. Now, I don't feel shameful in saying it. I don't have I don't have I don't feel any shame in saying you're I say you will. You know what? You will reap great shame and sorrow. You are not the if heaven's soul. filled with people like you, I'd be more comfortable in hell. Your you, story's bullshit. You, you took that 15-year-old girl out of her room at knife point. You are in hell. I you drove into her. a canyon. You raped her. You, you kept her tied up at the campsite. You traveled around the country with her for nine months, telling her that her name was some bullshit sheer job Esther Isaiah crap, saying that she was your wife sealed unto God. And then when you get caught for it, oh my God. Then all of a sudden, it's, she's been delivered to you by Christ. And, Christ and, no. and, and, and then they gnashed their teeth on him, on Christ. In well, their anger and their accusation against the Lord, they gnashed their teeth on him. You are not you the tire servant me. of Jesus. Yes. You're not the servant of Jesus. You are not. Jesus' servants do not take little girls out of their house You're a child labor. and have sex with them. Let's face it, you are Brian David Mitchell, and you are a child molester. A criminal. A criminal who has done criminal acts who cannot pass off his story by talking about they Jesus. Do you know, you are a fraud. You are, you are a fraud, sir. You're and a hypocrite. You are a hypocrite and a fraud, and this is bullshit. You are not a servant of Jesus Christ, and you need to get over that. You can take that little simple smile off your face like you're some, you know, servant of the Lord bullshit and stuff it, because we know the truth. The truth is that you went into her bedroom during the middle of the night, held a knife to her throat. And here's another thing Christ probably never did. I don't think he ever threatened to kill children. Suddenly you're then, someone suddenly someone who never read the scriptures knows all about you know the what? scriptures and the Lord. I went to church enough times to know that I never heard any uh, sermons from my from my priest saying that and then Jesus snuck into the most, bedroom at two o'clock in the morning and held most, a knife to her throat. Most, That's most, bullshit. Most churches and and sermons and leaders seek for popularity for power, for gain, for popularity, and to set. We're off the subject all again. All We're off the subject again. You're talking about the church. This, We're talking about Elizabeth. This is what the churches do. Brian. Brian. You're, you're full of shit. You. You're talking about you. Gain, popularity. We're not talking. I don't care about the church right now. I want to. I want to be able to explain. Oh wait a minute. I think we just hit a nerve there. Let's talk about lust of the flesh. The lust of the flesh are all, all of those things that you set your hearts upon other than Jesus Christ. You know what? My heart's not upon screwing a 14-year-old girl. Me virgin. neither. I've never wanted to have sex. And with I never have either, and my heart's not set on that. You either. did. I, my heart is not. I did not. You did. I did not. Did I not. did not. Did not what? Do what you just said. I did not. Did not do what? A 14 year old virgin I did to not. your campsite, and you had sex with her against her will. What you're you would want to show her how to do it, and then you made her do it. What you're and you had to tie her up at the camp. What you're accusing me of? I'm accusing you. You, look at me, look at me in the eye. I'm accusing yes. you of being a child molester, and rapist. And your accusation is false. 
Bullshit. Bullshit. That's the truth. Say bullshit all you want. We are. Accusation and guess what? I can say that, and I'm not I'm not going to feel any shame over it. Like you said, I'm going to no, feel no, shame. You no, you're lifted up in the pride of your heart. You know what? I'm not going to feel any shame at all. But you're going to feel great shame and great sorrow. No, I don't think no. so. You know the sorrow I feel? The sorrow I the feel is for the smart family. The, great destruction the sorrow I feel is for the smart family and a 14-year-old girl who was taken out I of bed. More bullshit. I have more compassion for that family. Then than prove it and tell us the truth. Don't give me this God I bullshit. More, I have more compassion bullshit. for that family. Bullshit. For and prove it. For Tell us the Jacob, truth. Jacob, Esther, Isaiah. The Tell, us the truth. I've told you nothing Tell us the truth. Tell us the truth. No, you haven't. Brian, nothing but you haven't truth. told us anything. If you want to show compassion so for that family, this, what then you can explain lead? it. What is this, this is me telling you that I think you're full of shit. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and, and what's that going to you know what I, even lead to? Do you know why I, I think you're full of shit, Brian? Listen, hear me out. Do you know what Jesus said about little children? He said that it is better for a man to tie a millstone around his neck and jump in the lake and drown himself and that's why rather than very, harm one hair and on that's why head. I feel so sorry for all of you that are doing no. this to Sir Jason Estrella. No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what this we is do what here. What you're doing to her, what you're, do, what you're, what you're doing to her I really struck a nerve there, didn't I? What you're yeah. doing to her. What you're doing that was right out of the Bible. You have harmed her. You have harmed a girl. You have harmed a child. The, you have gone against you Jesus Christ's written orders. You're harming her. No. 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 We didn't have sex with her. You brought her home to her family. You, you took a girl and you harmed I her. I saw her. I saw and her with her what? Contradiction to scripture. I don't doubt what she was crying. Why would she be crying? She must be, you know, somewhat distraught after, after past nine months of living with you. Jesus Christ. Having, having to have sex with you? I mean, how often do you shower? I mean, you've done I, a horrible thing. You and you're justifying it? it in your own mind by saying the Holy Spirit did it. What, what the two of you are doing is The scriptures terrible. say that what you, you have doing, sinned. What you're doing, what you are doing is sin. And what you you doing have is sinned a thing. great sin. I have been obedient unto God Almighty. You have Almighty. sinned. God and told you to have sex with yes, her. I have been obedient to God Almighty. God told you to have sex with her? You have you're, sinned. You, you're trying you to put words in my mouth. Did God no. tell you to have sex? Your with accusations her? against that's a simple false. question. Yes or no? Your Did God tell you to have sex with her? I told you your accusations against. I'm not her accusing false. you. I'm asking you a question. Your accusations are. It's false. a question. Did God tell you to have sex with her? Your questions are false. Did God tell you to have sex with her? Your questions are false. Is she the only child that God's ever told you to have sex with? Your questions are immaterial. It's a. It's something. No that, sense. Then give me an answer. No yes or no? I never. Because I never said God told me to do any such thing. And he never did. Oh, wait a so minute. God never told you to have sex with her. God told you to take her as your wife. He told us that just a little while exactly. ago. Exactly. And that's all I told you. So that you decided child. to have sex with her. I told you. I told you. Don't that face I the was, law. I told, you, I told you that I was obedient unto the Lord God. And look at us when he talked to us. receiving her. Why are you shutting your eyes when you talk to us? I told you that I was obedient unto the Lord God Almighty in receiving her. Okay. And to my... And to as my wife. So God didn't tell you to have sex with her. He told you to receive her as her wife, as your wife. That's all I told you. The God okay. Told me. So then you took it upon yourself to have sex with her. Your accusations are false. I'm 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 asking. Your accusations. Okay. So you have never had sex with her. Your accusations are false. In the in in what you're accusing me of, there's no truth. So you have not had sex in with your her. words, in your words, in what you're accusing me of, there's no truth. You know, you're just so full of shit. You can't even look me in the eye when you talk to me. Look me in the eye like a man when you tell me your lies, okay? You're You're not looking at him. You're not looking at me. Did you have sex with Esther, yes or no, as your wife that God said was okay to do? Did you or did you not? What, yes or no? What are you how are you determining Look me in the eye? Don't talking. answer like you're Bill Clinton. Answer the question. Did you have sex with her? You can't even look me in the eye. Now man. you're looking look at look up here. Give you one of us eye contact why, and you answer why, the question. Why? You, why should I submit to your control over me? Well, why you know what? Because Elizabeth your, had to submit why, to your control why, for nine why, months. Why should I submit to your accusations? Why should because Elizabeth your submit eyes, to your, your eyes, control? In your eyes are your accusations. Why should Elizabeth your, submit your to your your contempt, Why should Elizabeth your hate, submit to your control? Your ridicule, your condemnation. Why? Your, your, You're damn right we condemn guys who have sex with 15 year olds. And, and so I'm supposed, and I'm supposed to look in your eyes and receive that, that hate, that condemnation. You know, I've been, you, know, you know I've been looking into both of your eyes. No, you haven't. I have. Oh, yeah, now when you're telling me, now you are. Okay, so let me ask you this. Well, why question. should I submit to your control and look in your eyes when you Why should Elizabeth you? submit to your control? Why should Elizabeth submit to your control? Just you want to talk about control? Why should Elizabeth submit to your control? Why should she leave her I never, house? I never controlled her. You never had sex with Esther, yes or no? 
What was your name again? Parks. Parks. Answer the question. Parks. Did you have sex with Parks. Elizabeth? Yes or no? All I've done has been out of obedience to the Lord God Almighty. So did you have sex with her? Yes or no? According to your question, no. I did not. You did not? She I says not. that you did. I, I, I did not. Is she lying? Your, your, your question is false. I you need not. to defend yourself. You, you, I did you, not. You did not have I, sex with Esther. Look me in the eye. I'm looking at Parks. I'm looking you in the eye. And I say to your question, no. You did not have sex I say with to your, Elizabeth. I say to your question, no. Good. Now we're finally getting somewhere. Did you enter Ed Smart's house on June the 4th? Yes or no? Look me in the eye. Don't go away. Even if it's you know if what? you want to deny it, that's okay. We want your story. But your, you keep closing your, your eyes and refusing to answer. Did you enter Ed Smart's house? Your question. Yes or no? Yes or no. Simple. Look me in the eye. Did you or did you not? I want a denial or I want an admission. Either one is fine with me. Did you enter Ed Smart's house on June the 4th in the night? Yes or no, Brian? My name is Emmanuel, Emmanuel David Isaiah. Open your eyes and look at me. Did you enter Ed Smart's house June the 4th? Yes or no? Yes or no? It's a it's yes a or no question. question. You know you want to answer yes or no. If you want to stand for your actions as a prophet of God, it's time to answer. Yes or no? You don't respect me as such. I do not. No, you do. Because, because you, you lie to me. You won't even look me in the eye when you lie to me. And I've never said that I was a prophet of God. No, you said you were a servant of the Lord. I said I was a servant of the Lord. So as a servant of the Lord, did you enter Ed Smart's house on the night of June 4th and take Elizabeth from her bedroom at Knife Point? All of yes it. or yes no. Yes or no. You just want an answer to the question. And then we can move on. To what? It's a yes or no answer. Yes or no. I'm thinking, Brian, you're not answering Truthful answers don't need to be thought out ahead of time. I've already looked down and do closed you know your eyes. Do you know what? Mind. Do you know what? I've already answered that question. No, you over haven't. And over no, and you have not. You've never once answered the question. Yes, I have. You've been evasive I and said, you've gone off on tangents. I said that your that your question. No, your, question your eyes are shut again. I say that your question is an accusation. No, the question is: Did you on the night of June fourth go into the smart house? Your question. And take Elizabeth Smart. Your question her is an accusation. The question is a question, nothing more. It deserves a yes or no answer. You, I told you I already answered you according to the Spirit of the Lord. No, you didn't. You did not answer You didn't answer the question. I told you. You didn't answer the question. I told you I did. I no. didn't answer the question. You didn't. You tell me that you answered it, but you didn't answer it. Wait a minute. Wait a question according to what the Lord God Almighty put into my heart. Did you, did you just say that you did? I said I answered your question according to what the Lord God Almighty put in my heart to say. Well, the Lord God Almighty put into your heart nothing because your answer was evasive you that's that's your accusation that i was being evasive i know i'm being truthful no sir my accusation is that you are a burglar and child rapist those are my accusations and i'm waiting to hear your explanation and i'm telling you and testifying to you that i am a servant of the lord jesus christ and all that, I, and all that i've done children. all that I, i'm oh. we are giving you every opportunity I in the never, world to never, tell us what I never, happened i never raped anybody so she consented to it? I never raped anybody. Did she consent to have sex I'm with just you? telling you I've never raped anybody. Okay, so did she consent to have sex I'm with you? I'm telling you I've never raped anybody. You're accusing me of rape. I'm okay. telling you I've never raped anybody. Did you tie her to a tether her somewhere so that she wouldn't be able to leave your campsite? I've already answered your question. No, you didn't answer that one. I've already your answered your question. You didn't answer that one. Lord God Almighty put into my heart to say. Did the Lord put it into your heart to tie that girl so that she wouldn't be able to run away from you? It's a yes or no it's question, yes or Brian. No, question. no, it's not no, a yes or no question. It, sure it is, it it is, is right. not. Did you're you're God saying you're tell saying you're you saying to tie her down so you, that she wouldn't run saying, away from you. You're saying it's a yes or no question, but that's what you're saying. Yeah, that's saying a yes or no question. You know your words are now I'm getting saying, into gibberish because Brian, I think we're getting to you. We're getting to the very core of, of Brian Mitchell, who is not, who is not. David Isaiah Emmanuel, you know, you're really Brian Mitchell. You this know, like this is like this is like Job. No, it's not. Like this Job. is like Job. You're nothing like him. This you're is like him. this is like Job. God. When his best friends, and you're not my best friend. Job didn't like, kidnap he'd like, girls. He'd like me to think. Right. Job didn't kidnap 14-year-old girls and have sex with right. Job, Job had his best friends come to him to convince him that he had sinned. Yeah, now, if you, when you do that. 
You see, you're assaulting me. I just want you to look at me. You're assaulting me. He assaulted me. Now you both This is assaulting you? Yes. There's, both, there's no intent. Both, there's just intent to give you there's, my there, eyes. No, the, both of those were assaults. Brian, you, you grabbed my chin. You and know what else is assault? You, you know what else is you, assault? You put a knife to a 14 year old girl's me, throat. You poked me, and he. Took and my you chin took a and knife and held it to Elizabeth's okay. throat and took her out of the house and raped her and kept her for nine months. You tied her down so that she couldn't run away from you. Not, that's not an accusation. That's, that's a truth. That's, fact. that's a fact. That's a fact. And you want to talk about me doing this you're, when you're taking you're, your dick out and, and having sex with a 14 year old girl against her consent? Your accusations are false. So she consented to it. I have only done what the Lord God Almighty commanded me to do. Lord commanded you to have sex with a 14 year old girl? me to receive What does that mean to receive a girl? To receive her. What does it mean to receive her? What does that entail? Ryan, you're I can't. Close I can't. I can't talk about. I can't talk anything to you about what it entails. About what anything entails beyond what the Lord God puts in my heart to say. So when He says receive her, what do you do? God tells you to receive her as your wife. What do you do? What you, do you do? You're asking me. You're asking me to talk about things which are sacred and holy. What did oh. God tell you? To? Oh, you're, you're, that's, you're asking me. Brian, that's you're called. Asking that's me. called bullshit on that right away, Brian. Let's Emmanuel, call bullshit on that. Emmanuel, Dougie, Isaiah. All right. Emmanuel. You're asking I'm calling me, bullshit you're talking on that, Emmanuel. About sex. You're asking me to talk about things which are sacred and holy. And so it was holy to have sex with her. Sacred and holy? Sacred and holy to have sex no, with a 14-year-old no, girl. What you asked was, what does it mean to receive her? Yeah. That's all That's all you asked. Okay, that's well, give me an explanation. Put, all, and all I did is say, when you asked me the question, what does it mean to receive her? All I, then I, my answer was, you're asking me to speak about things which are sacred and holy, which I cannot talk about. And I'm calling bullshit on. So am I. I call it you're a cop out. You're calling bullshit. You know, you're call copping it, out. Call it whatever you want. You're pretty Cop cocky. That's what I see. I see you sitting back there, you know, spending all this theological bullshit to cover up the fact that you are... <clears throat> Want to take that 14 year old girl as your own. So you snuck into the bedroom during the middle of the night while she's laying there with her nine year old sister in bed. You hold a knife to her throat and this, say, You're coming with me. This is not sacred and holy. This is much more simple than that. This is about what you wanted. This is about Wanda's a faithful follower and she's been with you for thicker thin, but she's you're getting right. a little old and she's getting a little overweight. You're she's right. probably not as good looking little, as she is. A little now. unattractive, you know, older than you. But Elizabeth's a beautiful girl. But you, you see know Elizabeth and she's beautiful and she's, she's beautiful. thin and she's youthful. compliant and she's obedient. She's everything that anyone could ever want from a woman. And if she could just listen and be with you, you can. You can talk to her and she'll obey you and she'll believe you and she'll follow you and she'll make you a wonderful one. Bear you children. And there you go. And if that's your story, we're here to hear that. But yes, that's we get angry. My, that's not my story. That's your accusation and it's false. It's my accusation. So if my accusation is false, what what I told lead you, you to be with I this told you, old girl? I told you the truth. God called her to you, you said. God called her to be your wife. Is that right? Yes, he did. To be a wife means to have sex with the husband so the two can be as one, man and woman joined together. Is that not right? Yes. What God has put together and let no man put asunder and all that kind of stuff. So God called Elizabeth to be your sexual partner and to be a good dutiful you, wife to you. You, you blaspheme God. I do not yes, scripture. You blaspheme God. The devil, the devil can quote scripture too. So, but this is what happened. God yes. calls Elizabeth to you to be your obedient wife, your fourteen-year-old virgin, pure, beautiful wife. blonde. I told called to you for your reward told, for your works. I told you in God's eyes she was Queen. she's eighteen. In God's eyes she's eighteen. In God's eyes she's eighteen. In God's eyes she's eighteen. In the in the real world. In our eyes, she's 14. In God's eyes, she's 18. And she chose, and she willingly chose, to be sealed to me as my wife. She chose to be sealed to me? Yeah. Absolutely. You know, this is what Absolutely. we call a breakthrough. We want you to talk about your relationship with her. If your relationship with Elizabeth is good and holy and ordained by God, we want to hear that.
That's all you need to know about it. You said it. We need to know though you, though you, though you don't believe it. That's all. That's all there is that you need to know. So did Elizabeth show up in your camp one day? Was there for the Lord? How did you two meet? If you have nothing to be ashamed of in this relationship, we really want to hear how it came to be. You're both working very hard. We are working hard because we, we want your story. And you have a story. You're, you're you working it. very hard. Both of you are working very hard. Do you want to know why we want to, why we're working very hard? I already know why you're working very hard. Why is that? Hard. Why? Because you believe in what you're doing. And you, you like to do a good job, both of you. And what you believe is all the things you've you accused me of. So you're working really hard. Elizabeth accused you of it too. You're working really hard. Elizabeth accused you of you're it too. Working, you're working really hard. How come when we asked Elizabeth what happened, she didn't say that she was delivered to Emmanuel David Isaiah by the Lord just, and then just, accepted? I can, just, I can just imagine why she would say the things you want her to say. Well, um, no, 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 we just simply asked her, where have you been? She's, she, she, I can just imagine why she would say the things we, we don't want, want her to say. You know, Brian, I talked to Elizabeth out at the Sandy Police Station. I had a little short interview with her out there. She told me that you, not anyone else, not an angel, but you appeared in her bedroom and held a knife on her and took her out of the house under threat of harming her family and that you walked her to a campsite where Wanda was and that you tethered her and kept her for days and that even Wanda demonstrated to her how to perform sex and then that she was forced to have sex with you. Um, Brian, these are not the actions. I will, Dobby, I say it's my name. And here it again, it's again. I want you're not, I'm you're not changing honey. the subject, I'm not, Brian. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not honey to you. You know, I'm not, you're not, you're not being a friend. Whenever was I honey to you? This is intimidation. Was he honey to you? He no. He to me. He okay. Said, yeah. That's what I said. You you know, let me ask this. Let me ask this, Emmanuel. And, 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 you're, putting, and you're putting around your arm around me is not that of a, the arm of a friend. Is this is this anything yeah. worse though than what you did to Elizabeth? Are you just? Are you? What are you? What are you? Uh, I'm asking you a question. All I'm I saying get, is what I did. What I did. I did. And you, you, you did what? I, what I, I, oh, I, you almost did. You almost you know, answered a question. You know, Brian. Whatever we get. Too close to the truth. I told you, Out comes the Bible. I told, you, the Bible. <laughs> I told you that all that I have done has been out of obedience to the Lord. Oh, okay, you're, yeah, you're now back you're back under, to the Bible stuff. You're again. back under your defense mechanism because we got a little too close yeah. to the truth there. You, you're yeah, talking to him about putting his arm around you. I said, is that anything worse than what you did to Elizabeth? And then all of a sudden the Bible comes out. So let's go back again. I haven't done anything. Let's get back. I haven't done anything to Elizabeth. Have you what about? Except what the Lord got. Ex okay, so accept. So you did do something to her, but God told you to do it. I received her. I received her as my wife according to the commandment of the Lord. Okay, so somehow she had to get to your campsite. She says you got into the bedroom and took her there. She said she was forced to go. But this wasn't you? something that was pre-planned. That she knew about it ahead God of time and had her bags back. Her. Well, God didn't deliver her, her to you. You, you can get her. And got her. You could get her to believe many lies and accusations. Like the lie that. You know, you're a you, servant of the you Lord? Can, you can get her to believe many lies and accusations. Did you get her to believe any? Did you get her to believe any? I did not get her to believe anything. The Lord brought her to the knowledge of the truth. So you got her to believe that she I was your her, wife? I didn't get her to believe anything. The Lord brought her to the knowledge of the truth. So her knowledge of the truth is what? That you're the servant of the Lord and that she should have sex with you? And that she should be your wife? And that she should bear your children? You know and she should be sealed to you? This, you is, this isn't going anywhere. I didn't say that. Well, we agree because you keep sending us off on tangents when we get to the agree. When we get real questions. close to stuff, then it's, it gets interesting because then, you know, all these theological stuff starts mm -hmm. spewing out of your mouth that makes no sense to anybody sitting in the room. No, and it didn't when Christ spoke either. No, no, you're, not you're not Christ. Christ. You're no, not Christ. Christ. No, you may have a resemblance to him with the beard and the long brown I, hair. I've never, I've never said that I was. I need to use the restroom again if, if, if that's possible. And get another drink of water if that's possible. Yes, that's possible. Let's just check and make sure that uh, everything's clear. Thank you. Ah, it's clear. Uh,
Well, we appreciate that. We can always use a little break now and then. sing it in church. I've never, however, sang it at a campsite where I had a 14-year-old girl tethered up. Right before you had sex with her? Before I raped her. Did you, ever, did you ever sing it before you held a knife to a 14-year-old girl's throat? No, I no, didn't. Are you going to need something. Is it to this song? Because I grew up Catholic, we don't have this one. Four. Four? So much this is what we've been through, too. Emmanuel, we're going to wait right here while you hide in your song. But when you're done singing, you're going to have to come out and talk to us. You can't sing forever. You can't sing forever. I <laughs> come Emmanuel. Because I have been given much, I too must give. How about giving us the because truth? Because I have thy great love, dear Lord, each day I live. I shall divide my gifts from thee with every brother that I see. Who has the need of help from me? Because I have been sheltered, fed by thy good care, I cannot see a I'm actually waiting for digital photos. Okay. I'm waiting for Jason to come. Gotcha. I thought you were waiting for Amazing Grace. No. <laughs> we can wait for that too. I'm just waiting for Jason to get here and do his Or Swing Low Sweet Chariot. In fact, you don't know the rest of the words. That's the problem with Brian is he puts on the airs of being a great Christian, but when it comes down to real substance, I'm afraid there's no substance to him. I'm going to go see where Jason is. All right. I'll share my word again according to I'll share thy... Okay, you got hung up on that one. That's a tough note. Brian, we'd like to take a couple of your pictures. Would you mind standing up? Okay. Let's see. You tell me what pictures we want. I'll just do a bunch. Do a couple of close-in head and head and shoulder flash. face shots. I may not need it. See any tats or anything? I don't believe he does. He doesn't own the record that I have of him. Sliding that way just a little bit, and we'll just get the whole thing of you. Step back just a little bit because I'm trying to get some distance here. And you have any tattoos? Do the whole thing? Just do it if you want. Oh, yeah, take a bunch. 
Take some profile too. Okay. How about looking at this handsome gentleman right there? Okay, we'll do it. All right, how about looking at the wall for me? In fact, why don't you step this way a little bit so we can get a little more light on you. Scars or anything like that? No. Any wounds or anything? Okay, let me, yeah, I'll go give this to Ron and we'll make sure that it worked. Sit down, let's see. We've been awfully confrontational. We don't really like to do that. But honest to goodness, can I explain some things to you? You were, you were in Are you going to hide in your songs? Yeah, I'm going to hide in the Lord Jesus Christ. You're going to hide in the hymns? Stop talking. Yeah, because quoting the Bible can't work anymore. We're on to it. So we got to find a way to crack this new defense mechanism. Where is my soul? When I've read the Bible. And when I've read the Bible, I remember the scriptures about little children and how you're not to harm them. And Brian, I'm just wondering, are you going to tie a millstone around your neck and jump in the lake? <clears throat> like the Lord commanded that you should do? If you are a servant of the Lord, you should obey His commandments. And uh, Brian, you have not obeyed the Lord's commandments. In fact, you've been, you've been rather bad, Brian. Sin against a child, Brian. God forgives sinners. God will not forgive some sins. Any no Harming children is one of the sins that will not be forgiven, Brian. I draw myself apart. Searching. You know, this is a great mechanism that you come up with here, but it's only going to go on for yeah. so long. You need to talk to us. And honest to goodness, let's take an attack. Get we are behind, here. Get, get thee behind me, I'm Satan. On your side. Get thee behind me, Satan. No, I'm get not thee Satan. behind me, Satan. I'm not Satan, and I'm right here. I'm Gordon Parks. Get thee behind me, Satan. And I want a rational explanation. For get your thee action. behind me, Satan. If you're a prophet of God, strike get me dead. thee behind me, Satan. You have no power. Get thee behind me, Satan. You have no power, Brian. Get thee behind me, Satan. You have no power, Get Brian. Get thee behind me, Satan. You do not speak for Jesus, Brian. This is a new defense you mechanism. You do not speak for Jesus. You have no power over me. You have no power over anybody. You are not a servant of the Lord because you have sinned. You have harmed a child in direct contradiction to Jesus Christ's commandments. You need to evaluate your life here, Brian. We want your explanation of what happened. That's all we want. And then we're out of your hair. And then we're out of your hair. But you have to come back to the secular world for a few minutes, and you have to explain your actions, because we need to explain your actions. Yeah, it's a little dark, so I turn the flash up and then take oh. another disc and then go away. Which other ones are not. Go away, Craig Ruff. Go away. Oh, sorry. Okay. We have to get down to the real core of and we have to give us a secular explanation of what happened. You don't have any power here. You don't speak for Jesus Christ. You have done things that are sins and in direct contradiction to scriptures. You know, we actually don't hate you. We really don't. We just want an explanation for what happened so we can bring it back to the but, family. You know, honest to God, you do have to sit up straight and you do have to take some responsibility for your actions. And if you don't think that you were doing anything wrong, then we're going to hear that too, okay? Yeah, we have been bad, we have belittled you, and we have called you a fraud, and we've done all kinds of things, because you haven't been truthful with us, and you haven't given us explanations. We're really ready to listen. We have to hear your story to go tell the judge, okay? So will you talk to us? Brian, come out of here. Will you talk to us? 
listen, we're going to have a lot more patience. We've had, we've waited nine months, and we're going to we're, we cannot wait you on this. So we're not going away, and you're not leaving here. All it takes is a couple of minutes to explain what happened in a way that we can understand. That's it. Yeah, you don't live in the world, but you've got to come back to us, to the secular world, and just make your explanations, okay? If you never would have taken her, we would never would have had to have this conversation. You could still be living wherever you wanted to live. So right now, all we have is Elizabeth's explanations of events of what happened. And quite frankly, they make you look really, really bad. They do. I mean, there, there's no question about who did it. And there's really no question about the motive for it. And there's just no question about what happened. You've got to stand tall for some pretty uh, serious accusations and crimes, and we've given you every opportunity to give us a rational explanation of what transpired and give us your side of the story. And uh, we are very confused by your actions. You proclaim that you have done nothing wrong, even though what you have done is directly in contradiction to state laws and federal laws and God's laws. And whenever we get close to asking you what happened, uh, you just go off on irrational diatribes and start quoting scriptures and singing. It's obvious to me that you are very uncomfortable with your own actions and that you have no explanation. And unlike a true servant of Jesus Christ who can stand up and tell the truth and answer for their actions, you cannot. You cannot tell us what happened, which of course leads us to know that, Brian, you're a fraud. Deep down in the core of your being, you know that you are just a loser. You're just a loser who can't make it in the world. Who does fancy young girls. Unless you can go stay. take a virgin out of her own bed at knife point and force her to have sex with your smelly, disgusting self. A girl younger than your own daughters, for God's sakes. You know. You're no servant of Jesus Christ, Brian. You are what you are, which is unfortunately just a real low-life, street beggar, child rapist, fraud, sinner. I love you. I don't love you, Brian. I love you. Don't tell me. Don't tell me the truth. I love you. Oh, please don't. I got enough. Seriously. <laughs> I don't love you, Brian. No, I know you don't. I know you hate me. I don't hate you. I hate what you did. And I, and I forgive you. Hey, listen. I don't forgive you, Brian. Hey. You have no power to forgive me. Brian. You have no power to forgive sins on earth. That power only belongs to God. Don't forgive me. I don't want your forgiveness. You don't have the power to grant it. You think that you are morally superior because you've convinced yourself that the Holy Ghost speaks to you and only to you. And Brian, that's just a fraud. That's a lie. You have deceived yourself. Let's face it. You had a losing job at O.C. Tanner's. You had a string of losing marriages. You haven't been able to hold a job. You destroyed your relationship with your own children by having sex with them? You have just, you're just a loser. You were not set up on a pedestal by anybody. Any better than anyone else? If this you had to keep this girl in your camp by tying her down? That's right. That's I mean, what she told us. You have to take her at knife point. And why would anybody want anyone like that? A young girl, virgin, unless he's a child rapist. I mean, actually, you think of yourself as the highest of the high set apart by God, but the truth of the matter is, is your name is Brian Mitchell, and you're attracted to young girls and you're just a loser who can't hold a job or keep a marriage together or stay in a church. You're just... Or nothing. raise a child. Or raise a child or be a responsible father. You're just nothing, Brian. You're just a loser. Or find attractive and women. That's the first thing, true thing you said in all of that. I am nothing. The Lord Jesus Christ is it. Here we go again. That's right. We're all sinners, Brian. We're all nothing. We're all nothing, and you, least of all, you have done something that if you were really a true believer of Jesus Christ and a follower of his will, you would have killed yourself for harming a child. 
So don't don't tell me that you're a servant of God because servants of God obey His will and obey His commandments. You know that. That's right in the Bible. And yeah. they don't. And they don't. And they don't deny what they've done. And prophets stand up and answer questions directly. They're willing to stand up and say, "Hey, I did this," and uh, they're willing to take responsibility and, and and have whatever happened. Christ gave Himself up and knew He was going to die, and He was executed. So the real, I know that much about the Bible. So the real core values of Brian to us seem that Brian is just a loser who can't make it. Anytime someone asks you a really difficult question, spout off the Bible, quit your job, move somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Change your name. You want to talk to your mom about you quite a bit. Talk to your own children about you. You know, I feel bad for you, actually. You had a pretty tough life, you know, career-wise. Mm -hmm. Certainly marriage-wise, Debbie's a very mean and vindictive person. You know, you've been through a lot of hell. But don't tell us that you're a servant of Jesus Christ when your actions speak louder than your words. Okay? So, this is it. We're getting down to, like, your last opportunities here. We want to hear you talk. How about it? Let me in. Okay. Brian, can you open your eyes for a second here? Come on, just for a little bit. Don't open them to say I love you, because, you know, it's all too gushy for me. But, uh, <clears throat> maybe you could explain. Would you be willing to explain that to her family? I mean, do you want us to walk out of here and tell Elizabeth's parents, who have gone through absolute hell since June 5th, and tell them that, you know, <laughs> God, God delivered your daughter Elizabeth, your beautiful 14-year-old daughter. Elizabeth delivered her, her to... Uh, homeless transient that smells bad and lives in a tent in the mountains. Is that what you want us to tell her? Tell them? You know, the reason that we know that you're full of shit is because your actions speak louder than your words. The burglary in San Diego, you gave a bad name. You told him your name was Johnson, Michael Johnson. The date of birth, you told him, was one digit off from every digit in your real birthday. Does a servant of God break into a, what was that, a church? What was that all about? Did Jesus, when he was ever confronted by the Romans, did he ever say his name was uh, Mike Johnson? And not only that, what about the shoplift from the 7-Eleven across the street? Stealing beer? Beer? I mean, what's that all about? You know, you're just full of shit, Brian. You're full of shit. And we want to get to the basics here. We really do want to get into your head and have you tell us what you were thinking and what happened and why you did what you did. It's your story to tell. And i got to tell you right now, it's not looking good for you. You were really looking at the rest of your life in prison, and I know right now that doesn't seem like much to you, but you're never going to see Wanda again. You're never going to walk around and panhandle. You're never going to eat decent food. you got to wonder what's going on in that interview, too. I think Wanda wants to spend the rest of her life in prison. You think she's going to fall for this hook, line, and sinker? <clears throat> or do you think she's going to start talking about everything that happened during the past nine months and how you engineered this whole thing and planned it? Just because you wanted to be a young girl. Women are women. Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. And I guarantee you there's probably some point in time where your wife was probably jealous that you were paying more attention to a beautiful 14-year-old blonde-headed girl than her. You know, we see what happened here, Brian. What happened is Wanda's getting a little older. She's getting a little dumpy looking. And you go work on a house, and there's an absolutely beautiful, obedient, angel, virgin, playing the harp. And oh, my goodness. Why would God have her even born on this earth unless it was to deliver her to you, for you to do as you will with her? You know? pretty ugly scenario here. We're thinking very ugly thoughts about you, Brian. And your response is to try and hide behind your closed eyes and ignore us. Well, you can't, okay? You just can't. You're a fraud. You're no servant of God. God doesn't talk to you. 
the Holy Spirit hasn't told you to do anything. You took this girl because of your own lust and your own desires. You committed a horrible crime against God and against the laws of the state of Utah and the United States. You know, you've done terrible things, and the only thing you can do is hide behind your closed eyes. You know, we're just not getting through to you. If you want to go down like this, <clears throat> you're going to go down. But let me tell you, you're not going down as a servant of God. You're going down as a child rapist. You're just going down as a child rapist. You're going down as the lowest of the low. And when you get into that prison with all those other people, oh, you're going to they, they're going to think even uglier thoughts than we are. You're going to be famous. And maybe you think the Lord will protect you in prison, but I guarantee, just as you cannot order me to get behind you and get out of your your hair and drop dead, you sure as can't order them to do anything either because, Brian, you have no authority from God. The Holy Spirit has granted you nothing. Nothing, Brian. Must have been pretty powerful to have that power over Elizabeth that whole time, that whole nine months. Any other child would have absolutely just run away at the first opportunity. Okay? But you just latched on to one that because of her good LDS upbringing was very obedient and easy to brainwash. Well, your luck has run out. It's time to answer. So how about it? Are you going to tell us anything, or are you just going to hide there behind your closed eyes and be a martyr? Martyrs of it. Well, it's too good of a term for Brian. Brian's exactly. no martyr. I'm thinking of martyrs like, you know, he's definitely not one of them. Well, I guess we're getting to things that are just too painful to talk about here because you're just hiding in there and you're not being responsive. We're answering this. Tell me this though, Brian, you do realize that your life is different from this moment on, right? You do? Maybe he's trying to impress upon us that he's already been delivered and he's not available anymore. Uh, I hate to tell you this, Brian, but the rapture has not happened. God has not taken you to heaven. You're still in this room with me and, and Jeff here. You cannot escape. God is not going to save you because you have not been subservient to God, not the true God. You're just a low-life child molester. God is not going to protect you from this. There's no protection from us. You need to come out of there, Brian. Come on. Do you know how many people have been hurt in addition to Elizabeth and her family? How many people have been dragged in here because they've worked at the smart house and have had their lives completely disrupted because of something that you did to satisfy your own sexual lust for a 14-year-old girl? And do you know that a man was taken into custody named Richard Reese, A totally innocent man? Innocent. And you knew about it, and you failed to tell us. You failed to come forward. And Richard Reese died because of your actions. He died because of your refusal to come forward. And he died man, because of the stress of being held in prison. You were willing to let another man take your place. Christ wouldn't have done that. Doesn't Christ take our place for our sins? And instead you sent an innocent man to death because you weren't man enough to step forward and admit your actions? You could have saved Richard Reese at any time. At any moment, you could have saved an innocent man just by coming forward and saying, here she is, alive and well. But no, you let it die. You let an innocent man go down and die for your actions. And for what? And for what, Brian? Because of your sexual desires for a young virgin? Oh, man. I don't love you, Brian. You are a fraud. You are a fraud, sir. You let people take the blame. And you piss me off because you try to hide behind Jesus Christ to justify your own actions in your own mind. Which isn't that uncommon with pedophiles. It's not. No. That's absolutely not. Child molesters always, you know. They're usually the ones that sing the loudest. That's right. The loudest in church. Yeah. Priests, youth counselors, That's LDS right. bishops. Yeah. And here we have another one right here. Servant of the Lord. Servant of the Lord that let an innocent man go to his death because he would refuse to come forward. A man who harmed a child, a mere child. You know, no, we don't have any respect for you, Brian. And I don't think that your name is Emmanuel. I think that's all part of the grand fraud that is your life. 
uh, waiting to hear rational explanations for your actions, Brian. We're quite willing to sit here and wait you out for the dinner time. Frustrated? Do you take joy in frustrating our efforts? This must be kind of a power play. Here's a homeless, transient guy who can't keep a job, who's got the whole Salt Lake City Police Department, the FBI, just waiting on what you have to say. That's pretty powerful. That's pretty powerful. And that's what it all comes down to. It's not consent. It's not, you know, oh, I'm in love with this, you know, this Elizabeth girl, she's in love with me, she's going to she's gonna be sealed as my wife and I'll live out in the woods with her. It's not that. It was all about power. Otherwise, you could have just knocked on the door and said, excuse me, Mr. Smart, but uh, I think your daughter wants to come with me. Now you, now you, you must be feeling pretty powerful now. It has nothing to do with Christ or the Bible or Old Testament, New Testament. None of that. It all comes down to Brian David Mitchell, homeless, transient, can't keep a job, can't keep a wife, can't keep his dick out of his kids' hands. And, uh, you know, complete loser at everything. But, boy, for that nine months, you were king. You had a 14-year-old girl at your beck and call. But, you know, she didn't come willingly, so you had to tie her down, hold a knife to her throat, threaten her little sister. And now this is your chance to take responsibility for your stuff, for your actions. You sit there. You sing church hymns. You quote scripture. You shut your eyes. It's pretty powerful. The only problem is, is you don't seem to know your scriptures as well as you think you do. Well, as well as Corden. And I've only read the Bible three times in my lifetime. Well, I can honestly say I only read it when they told me to. You don't know your hymns. You run out of you run out of the verses after the second verse. You don't know the words for them. Then you start humming. Then you start humming. You can't answer the truth. You know, the truth is such a simple thing. It never changes. It never changes. So the new move is just keep quiet and sit there with your eyes shut. And that we're not here. You know, you talk about our tactics being bad, yours are worse. You think you're the only guy that we've ever talked to in this room? You think you're the only pedophile that we've ever had to sit down with and have a long chat with? That we've had to ask them about how many kids they've had sex with, how many yeah. children they forced. You know, you're really not that different, you know. You're not that different than anybody else. You're not. Just not. You're not special, Brian. And this bullshit about the Holy Spirit talking to you and commanding you to do this and commanding you to do that. That's it's just out. one big ego defense mechanism to cover up the failures of your life, Brian. It's a, it's a, it's a thinking error. It's you know. a failure to take responsibility for your own actions, so you put it on the Holy Spirit. That's a that's. But we know. Deep so down inside, you know that the Holy Spirit doesn't talk to you, Brian. You know that. Deep down inside, you know you feel horrible about yourself and that you think you're a horrible person because you like having sex with young girls. But the only way that you can defend it and kind of move on without tying a millstone around your neck and throwing yourself in the lake is if you trick yourself into some thinking distortion that... The Holy Spirit told you to do it. 
you know, you stand convicted by your own actions, Brian. You are convicted. You're very convicted. Because Jesus said, by the fruits you shall know them and know what they are. Good trees bring forth good fruit. Bad trees bring forth bad fruit. We've seen what you've brought forth, Brian. What you've brought forth are two rather large felonies under the state of Utah statutes. Forcible sex with a, a young underage girl, an abduction out of her safe bedroom in the middle of the night. Um, you know, your, your arguments are absurd on their face as far as uh, you being a servant of Jesus Christ. Your actions speak much louder than your words. You know, you're you're just a fraud. And do you think you're seriously going to go to court and sit in front of a jury of your peers and try and say that you are deluded into thinking you were doing the right thing and, and maybe that will get you off somehow? I need to point out to you that you were contacted by a policeman by Wild Oats and you gave a bad name. You were contact, You were arrested for burglary in San Diego. You gave a bad name and a bad date of birth. The Sandy police stopped you on State Street out by the graveyard and again you gave a false name and a false date of birth trying to fool them into thinking you're somebody else. But when you get stopped today, you're Emmanuel David Isaiah. And once you're arrested by me and we bring your ass down here, then, you're, then you climb up on your high horse and try to hide behind Jesus Christ and Scripture, but you don't know your Scriptures that goddamn well. And you don't know your hymns. You're just you're not you're just revolting to me. Okay, you think you're something special, but you're just another criminal. Criminal guy. You've committed criminal acts, and you've got to stand for it. And when we even want you to express your opinions about you know about why you are who you are and why you did what you did, you won't answer the most direct and easiest of answer questions, not even a yes or no answer. No. You're a fraud. You're a fraud, Brian. And you stand convicted in the eyes of God and in the eyes of the law. And you don't have any Should explanation. I consider that assault? You just don't have any explanation and that's why you're hiding behind your closed eyes and your stony silence. You're just, you have no explanation. And we are not going away. And you have no inspiration. And God is not going to save you from this. And you ordered me in the name of God to get behind you, and here I am in your face, and you know now that you don't have any authority from God. You're just a man like anyone else. Okay. And not a very good one at that. I think there's a reasonable argument to suggest that God delivered you to us. You're here. We saw through your lies. And we arrested you, and we brought you here. Why'd you come back to Salt Lake City? How about just answering that, Brian? Why'd you come back to Salt Lake? I mean, this had to be the hottest place of all places to come to. Everyone knows Elizabeth's face. It's still posted on every single storefront that I've ever been into since June 5th. Why'd you come back here? Is she going to be a pain in the ass? Huh? Two women, too much of a pain? Too much nagging? Is that it? You got a little smile on your face when I said that. Women can be tough to live with. Two? Were you dying of estrogen poisoning? Was it getting to you? Come on, man. You remember even answer that one. Why'd you come back to Salt Lake City? Come on. Why'd you come back to Salt Lake? Huh? Did you come back to Salt Lake because you wanted her to go back home? Hmm? Was it getting too much of a pain to try supporting three people in the <clears throat> panhandling and recycling cans? Was she starting to hope that she was back home with her parents at school with a boyfriend her age? 
with their sister Mary Catherine? Huh? You know, you might think that you're special and all that, but as soon as we separated Elizabeth from you, I mean, the very second I sat down with her in Sandy, she started to give you up. She gave you up. She didn't even hesitate. And you know what she thinks of you? She thinks you are a child rapist. You took her virginity from her. You took her out of her own house away from her own family and did the most vile and unspeakable act a grown man can ever do to a child. Elizabeth doesn't like you. She doesn't like you. She's talking about you right now. Okay? So is your wife Wanda. You're nothing special. Elizabeth doesn't like you at all. She found you actually rather smelly and disgusting. You know that, Brian? Your family for all eternity, Wanda and Elizabeth, they don't even like you. That's got to be tough. Oh, yes, Elizabeth is Elizabeth. She ain't Jeshua. Sure, J. Sure, Jship. Right, that's what a bunch of horseshit that is. You're Did you actually think that this uh, biblical explanation was going to work? Because, I mean, as soon as we walked in, it was almost like it was scripted. I'm sure that Brian has been thinking about what would happen when the gravy train came to an end and the police finally got on to him. Because I'm sure that even in your thinking, Brian, you know that the good times wouldn't last forever. You had to have an exit strategy. Yeah, it's not like... And this is it. The only problem is, is we've debunked your fantasy life about being a prophet of God. It would have It would have worked had he stood up and told, told the truth whenever you were contacted by the police. You know, a jury would have believed you, but since you've deliberately lied three times I'm aware of now to cover your identity, I don't think any jury's going to believe that you're really all that crazy, are they, Brian? No? Mm -hmm. Your whole life is crashing down around you right now. Oh, I would say it's over. It's done. Wanda's giving you up. She obviously didn't like the fact that for nine months, you know, you found someone new. Beautiful 14-year-old blonde girl. I brought Elizabeth down with her dad. Ed. They rode in the back of my police car all the way down here. You know, they sat there and they cried together all the way back. They were so happy to be back together again. And Elizabeth is so happy that she no longer ever has to see you again as long as she lives. She never has to touch you again. She never has to smell your foul body odor. She never has to lie with you. She never has to sleep out on the streets again. Sleep out in the camp with a tethered down to a... so that she can't run away. She's free. She's free of you. And if you think anybody's going to lie to protect you, guess again. No one She's is. She's already been in there telling us everything that happened. And guess what? Wanda doesn't want to spend the rest of her life in prison. You're finished, my friend. You're going to jail from here, and you were never, ever, ever going to get out. You were going to die in prison. Does that mean anything to you? No one's going to listen to you prophesy out there. No one's going to give a shit if you say that you're inspired by God. You're going to die a very miserable and lonely old man in a jail cell with nobody to come to visit you, nobody caring about you. Is that what you want? And all your stuff about being a prophet, as soon as this hits the news, they're not going to look at you that way. They're going to look at you as homeless, jobless, drifter, loser, child molester, kidnapper. It's not going to say, servant of the Lord arrested in the kidnapping of Elizabeth Smart. They're going to say, homeless drifter who worked at Ed Smart's house, arrested for kidnapping Elizabeth Smart. And child rape and, and and raping her and all your stuff about marriage sealed by she was you were you received her from the Lord is is going to be laughed at. Maybe sometime you'll want to tell us exactly what happened. I'm not leaving. No, you have no explanations. You have to hide in your stony silence because 
the truth is just too difficult for you to say. The truth is too difficult to face instead of being... I mean, just think of how that sounds if you were to say it. I like to have sex with 14-year-old girls. I mean, just to admit that, that's got to be the lowest of low, especially when you know that it's wrong. And especially when you have to do it by force. I mean, there's 14-year-olds out there that will lay down for you if you approach them right. Consensually, they'd be glad to. Oh, no. What did you Not do? a beautiful angel like Elizabeth. you got to take a knife, sneak no. into her bedroom, threaten to kill her, threaten to kill her little sister, then drag her out and hike her up to a camp. And you need a virgin. And tie her down. She's got to be a virgin and pure. And that doesn't make you any more pure, Brian. That just makes you that much more sick. Sick, Brian. You gotta have a virgin, so you took one against her will. And now we're God. throwing bullshit on you in your life, and all you can do is sit there behind your stony silence. Because we know, we both know, you got no explanation. You You're got nowhere to go. You're a pussy. You're a loser. You just can't answer. <laughs> but you know what? I feel comfortable knowing that Elizabeth Smart, from here on out, is where she belongs. And I feel comfortable knowing that you will never be able to put your hands on her again, and you'll spend the rest of your life in prison. And I'll feel no shame for it. I don't think I'll burn in hell for it. I think uh, my patron, St. Saint, Saint Michael's, is going to you know, look down upon us and say, good job. I don't look upon me with any shame or anything like that. No. It's going to be difficult when you, you know, to face up to the fact that, that one day, you probably weren't expecting it to be today. I don't think you probably ever knew what day it was going to be, but that you actually have to face up to the fact that your whole make-believe world was just all a bunch of lies based on a bunch of lies. And based upon lust. Yeah, that's what it all comes down to. You wanting to have sex with Elizabeth Smart, that beautiful, blonde-haired angel who played the harp, but in a nice house that you worked at. And you said, remove her from Babylon. <laughs> what a laugh. Why would you say that? Hmm? Why is, why is, why is a smart family... Why is their household considered Babylon? Why did you feel the need to remove her from there? You know, if you would have chosen an unrighteous girl, that would even be some sort of an explanation. But these guys were devout LDS. They prayed.